everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. In today's invasive species episode, I will be covering continental Europe. There has been a few requests to do different countries in Europe, but most invasive species of a certain country in Europe can also be found in many others across the continent. And again, as I've done so many videos on invasive species, I have been through some of the main invasive species in Europe. But in today's video, I will be going through five completely new invasive species that can be found in continental Europe. And for our first species, we'll start off in Japan and China, as we have the common raccoon dog. Despite its name, this mammal is not actually closely related to the raccoon, and the species got its name because of the markings beneath their eyes. The raccoon dog is actually a member of the family Canidae, which also includes foxes, wolves, and domesticated dogs. Unlike domesticated dogs, the raccoon dogs do not actually bark. Instead, they let out a high-pitched whine or whimper, which is quite cute in my opinion. The raccoon dog or tanuki plays a very important role in Japanese culture, as they're thought to be a sign of good luck, and tanuki statues can be found outside parks and restaurants across Japan. In the wild, this species is an omnivore, feeding on almost anything, such as insects, rodents, amphibians, birds, fish, and reptiles. Raccoon dogs are also known for being very intelligent, and often thrive around urban areas. Large cities have lots of leftover food, which these raccoon dogs are more than happy to take advantage of. The story of the raccoon dog making its way to Europe is in fact a very sad one. Around the world, invasive species are villainized, but in almost all cases, they have become invasive because of humans. Raccoon dogs were imported into Europe in the 1900s for the fur trade. This inhumane industry normally consists of raccoon dogs being kept in small wire cages for their entire lives. In widely publicized recent incidents, clothing being sold as fake fur was actually found out to be fur of raccoon dogs. And if this angers any of you as much as it does me, I'll leave some links in the description for ways you can help stop this cruel industry. Many of the raccoon dogs from these fur farms either escaped or were intentionally introduced into the wild. As these raccoon dogs are so adaptable and feed on many different food items, they were soon able to spread very quickly and are now a problem invasive species in many countries across Europe. The tanuki have very few natural predators in Europe, but some of them are other members of their family, as they're known to compete with foxes, and one of their main predators are wolves. As in some areas, wolves are thought to account for around 55% of all raccoon dog deaths, which helps to keep their numbers under control. Because of their intelligence and adaptability, Ability, it's feared that they can spread even further to a point where the damage can't be undone. And although they're seen as a problem invasive species today, the common raccoon dog is really the victim of this story. Before our next species, we'll be heading to the freshwaters of Asia as we have the topmouth gudgeon. This small member of the carp family prefers well vegetated ponds, reservoirs, and small lakes. In these waters, they have a broad diet which normally consists of small insects, fish, and plant matter. On this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 10 centimeters or 3.9 inches long. And although this is isn't very big at all. They're known to reach this size very quickly. This fish was introduced into ponds in Romania in the 1960s. It soon made its way into the Danube and from there spread throughout Europe. As the topmouth gudgeon is such a small fish, it's not going to predate on native European species, but instead it competes with them for food and also feeds on their eggs. Topmouth gudgeons are also known carriers of parasites. Most of these don't damage the topmouth gudgeon itself, but attacks other species such as sunbleaks. But the topmouth gudgeon doesn't just harbor parasites that can affect other fish, as they also have parasites that can infect humans. They are known carriers of the oriental liver fluke, which can cause abdominal pain, indigestion, fatigue, and diarrhea. This fish has been known to breed up to four times a year, which means that they can now be found in some pretty impressive numbers across Europe. The problem has become so bad in some areas, environmental agencies have decided to use pesticides to try and eradicate these fish from European waters. So although the topmouth gudgeon is small, it has caused a massive problem in Europe. Before our next species, we'll be heading over to Africa, as we have the African sacred ibis. This species is known for its role in the religion of the ancient Egyptians, where it was linked to the god Thoth. Today, this species has been wiped out in Egypt and is mostly found in sub-Saharan Africa. They're normally found along marshy wetlands and mudflats, where they primarily feed on insects, worms, crustaceans, and even reptiles and small mammals. This species was imported into France and Italy in the 19th century. This was so that they could be specimens in zoos, but small populations of these canny birds soon escaped. Today, there are thought to be more than 3,000 of these birds in Europe, and it's thought that this number could rise. This sacred ibis is known to compete with native wetland birds and even predate on them. The African sacred ibis is known to be an opportunistic feeder and won't turn its nose up at going through garbage and also scavenging carcasses. As this species reaches a maximum size of around 68 centimeters or 27 inches long, it's much larger than most of the other wetland birds in Europe. Because of this, it can bully them and take over food sources. They are also known to feed on eggs of smaller species, having a massive impact on their numbers. Because of these damages, there are bans put in place in the whole of the European Union, meaning that this species cannot be imported, bred, or commercialized. So 
Although this species may be sacred to the Egyptians, it's definitely not wanted in Europe. But for our next species we'll be staying in Africa as we have the African clawed frog. This species is normally found in wetlands, ponds and lakes across sub-Saharan Africa. In these waters they are predators, feeding on other amphibians, insect larvae and small fish. To help them tackle these prey items they have three short claws on each hind foot. If you often visit aquarium stores, you'll probably be very familiar with this species as they're commonly sold in the aquarium trade and make a strange yet undemanding pet. The African clawed frog has also been used in research for many years. They were once widely used used in a method of pregnancy testing as the urine from a pregnant woman would induce egg production. Over time these frogs were either intentionally introduced or had escaped from labs and have now found their way into the fresh waters of Europe. As these frogs are such voracious predators, they have easily become a harmful invasive species. They are known to decimate native populations of amphibians as they not only compete with them but also eat them and their young. As many frogs in the pet trade are often kept in poor overpopulated conditions, they are also known to be carriers of disease and fungus. This species has been linked to declines in amphibian populations around the world and this could soon be the case with the amphibians in Europe. And again this is just another reason why you shouldn't release your pets into the wild. But for final species we'll be heading over to North America as we have the raccoon. Now as I've already covered the common raccoon isn't very closely related to the raccoon dog. But despite this they live a very similar life and have a very similar role in the ecosystem. The common raccoon is omnivorous, feeding on a variety of invertebrates, plants and vertebrates. To help them forage around for their food they have some quite spectacular hands, as these are known to be hypersensitive and are known to be some of the most effective hands outside of the primate family. Raccoons are very intelligent, which may be one of the main reasons why they do so well in urban environments. Some of you American viewers have let me know how crafty these mammals can really be and they really aren't shy when it comes to going through people's garbage. Raccoons were intentionally introduced into Germany in 1934. This was by request of their owner, who was a poultry farmer. Later on in 1945, 25 raccoons escaped from a fur farm after an airstrike from the British and today there are thought to be hundreds of thousands of raccoons in Germany alone. As they do so well in both forested areas and urban areas, their numbers have exploded and there's fears that they may spread across the rest of Europe. They're known to cause havoc by hunting native birds and their eggs and also making a mess of farmland and vineyards. So it turns out raccoons cause very similar problems to raccoon dogs. But that's about it for this video. If you have any suggestions for the next destination then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. Bye.